morning boys and girls. Today I am so excited to share with you plans for the rest of the summer. What we're going to do between now and the end of the summer. What we're going to do is a thing called Compassion Camp. Be kind, be loved, be you. It's a wonderful program from Illustrated Ministries and we're going to use different parts of it and we're going to spread it out over the rest of the summer. So I'm excited to get started on it with you. The first lesson is called At the Table and it's about compassion and how compassion helps us see and welcome other people. It's important that we see other people and that we welcome other people. Excuse me. Sorry, did that make any of you have to yawn? I did that on purpose. I just want to show you that when we yawn, it makes other people yawn. Have you ever, has it ever happened to you? It might have just then. Actually, science shows that even dogs and chimpanzees do the same thing when they see each other yawn. It makes them yawn. They do that because they feel it and something happens in their brain. They see it and it tells their brain and makes them feel this urge to yawn. The same is true if somebody is laughing. Have you ever been somewhere where you're not supposed to laugh? You have to be really quiet. It can be hard. And maybe you look over and you see your brother, your sister, or your friend starting to giggle and you can't help it and you start to giggle and before you know it you're both laughing. Well that's because laughter is also contagious. If you see someone laugh, it tells something in your brain. There's science behind it, but don't ask me about explaining all of that but it makes you feel that need to laugh. Another thing is if somebody's crying, maybe you see somebody crying and it makes you feel sad. Maybe it even makes you want to cry. So that's, and then maybe you want to help the person. So feeling the feeling with someone else is called empathy. Wanting to help the person is called compassion. So compassion camp, we're going to learn about when you look at someone and you feel how they're feeling, and you want to help them and take care of them. That is compassion. So for this first lesson, we're just going to start out by learning about compassion and learning about being welcoming to other people. I'm going to break it up into two different weeks. So next week, I'm going to share a story from the Bible with you about two brothers. And this week, I'm going to share a book with you called The Invisible Boy by Trudy Ludwig. This is a book we've read together in the Sunday School Room. You may not have been there that week, but it is, it's a great book. And we have, we have read it before, but it's a good one to read again. And see if you can find compassion in this book. Can you see Brian, the invisible boy? Even Mrs. Carlotti has trouble noticing him in her classroom. She's too busy dealing with Nathan and Sophie. You see him? Nathan has problems with what Mrs. Carlotti calls volume control. He uses his outside voice inside too much. Sophie whines and complains when she doesn't get her way. Nathan and Sophie take up a lot of space. Brian doesn't. When the bell rings for recess, Micah and JT take turns choosing kids for their kickball team. The best players get picked first. Then the best friends of the best players, then the friends of the best friends. Only Brian is left, still waiting and hoping. JT glances in Brian's direction and just as quickly looks away. We've got enough players for each team, he tells the others. Let's play ball. And there he goes by himself. In the cafeteria, Madison and her friends talk about her birthday party. The rope swing over the pool was awesome, says JT. Yeah, so was the water slide, adds Fiona. That was the best pool party ever. I'm so glad you guys had fun, says Madison. Everybody did except Brian. He wasn't invited. At choosing time, while the other kids play board games and read, Brian sits at his table doing what he loves to do best. He draws fire-breathing dragons scaling tall buildings. Greedy pirates digging for treasure, space aliens locked in intergalactic battles, and superheroes with the power to make friends wherever they go. 
On Monday morning, Mrs. Carlotti introduces Justin, a new student to the class. Brian smiles shyly at him. Some of the other kids sneak looks at Justin, trying to figure out if he's cool enough to be their friend. They haven't quite made up their minds yet. At lunch, Madison and JT watch Justin eat with chopsticks. What's that? asks Madison as she points to Justin's food. It's bulgogi. Bul what? Bulgogi. It's Korean barbecued beef. My grandma made it for me. It's really good. Do you want to try some? There's no way I'd eat bulgogi. And the kids laugh, all of them. That is, except Brian. He sits there wondering which is worse, being laughed at or feeling invisible. The next day, when Justin goes to his cubby to put away his backpack, he notices a piece of paper with his name on it. Justin, I thought the bulgogi looked good. Brian. At morning recess, Brian finds a piece of chalk on the ground and starts drawing away. You're Brian, right? Yeah, thanks for the note. Hey Justin, Emilio calls out from the tetherball court. You're up next. Sorry, I gotta go, says Justin. By the way, that's a really cool drawing, he adds before taking off. Back in class, Mrs. Carlotti asks the kids to team up in twos or threes for a special project. The kids scurry around the room to pair off. Brian heads toward Justin. I'm already with Justin, says Emilio. Find someone else. Brian looks at the floor, wishing he could draw a hole right there to swallow him up. Mrs. Carlotti said we can have up to three people in our group. We're only two. Come on, Emilio, let him work with us. Okay, I guess. Mrs. Carlotti gives the class directions for the project. Your assignment is to work together to write a story about what you see in that photograph. Use your imagination and have fun. Whoa, cool, says Emilio. What kind of people do you think would live in, a hou in houses like that? I don't know, but I bet Brian could draw them to go with our story, says Justin. Brian smiles as he takes out his lucky pen. Is Brian invisible anymore? He's got color to him now. Do you see that? There they are, making their plan, drawing their stuff, putting it all together. The crooked story we made up on the spot. And they all work together. It's lunchtime again, Brian's least favorite part of the day. Another 20 long minutes of kids talking and laughing with everyone else but him. Brian, he hears someone shout. Hey, Brian, over here. Brian turns and sees Justin waving him over. Emilio nods at Brian as he makes room for him at the table. Cookie? Thanks. Maybe, just maybe, Brian's not so invisible after all. always loved this book so he goes from being invisible at the beginning no color to him to look at him there and all it took was one kid Justin to feel for him he saw him and he knew that he was sad and so he had compassion and he looked out for him and he included him in what he was doing I know you guys are capable of that so when you see someone who is sad or mad Try to think about how they might feel and then think about maybe helping them. Think about how, what it means to have empathy and feel for them and then take it one more step further and try to help them to feel better. We can all do that. Grown-ups and kids can do a better job of doing that. I would like to say a prayer with you and for this prayer we're going to do the same prayer for the next few weeks. <clears throat> I want you to think about your head which helps you to think, and your heart, which helps you to feel. So the empathy, when you think, you see, and you begin to use your heart to feel what somebody else is going through. So try doing this and praying with me, okay? Welcoming one, your warm white arms are always open, drawing us into your heart full of love. Make our arms your own, helping us see and welcome with compassion all those we meet. 
Amen. I look forward to the rest of the summer and learning with you and teaching about compassion and love and kindness to each other. There's so much fun we're going to have. Look this week for a package that comes from me. And then next week I'm going to tell you the story um, about the two brothers who chose very different paths and how their dad loved them both just the same. I hope you have a wonderful week. Like I said, that package will be coming. Remember that you are loved by your family. You are loved by your church, me and missed very much. And also you are loved by God. I hope to see you next week. Take care.